I'm Kyle Smith with Haggerty. Welcome to another Kyle's Garage. Today I'm talking carburetor basics and terms that you need to know before you dive in and try and rebuild your own carburetor. Now, what I've got here on the table is the carburetor off this SL, as well as a couple others that are off automotive applications so I can show you how they relate and also what is different between a motorcycle carburetor or most motorcycle carburetors and also some automotive carburetors. Now, this little carburetor for my Honda SL is a simple little thing, and a carburetor at its core is very simple. All it needs to do is mix air and fuel as it goes into the engine. And so, all it needs to have is a place for holding fuel, the float bowl, and then the other thing it needs is a Venturi. And all that is is a narrow as the air is coming into the engine, which pulls the fuel into the airflow, therefore mixing it in and creating something that can combust in the combustion chamber. Carburetors have gotten extremely complicated over the years because there's multiple circuits, high speed, low speed, idle, but at their core, they're a very simple device. And so I'm gonna split this one open because this bike's been giving me a little bit of trouble and I think I know what's wrong, but I figured it would be a good time to talk about some of the common terms of a carburetor. And so what I'm gonna do is split the float bowl off of this one and I'll just use a little screwdriver here to pry this off because it's just a spring loaded. And you can see there that the float bowl is just a literal bowl. All it is is a small amount of fuel storage. Think of it as a tiny gas tank. Your fuel pump is going to pump from the large gas tank up to the front or near the engine, wherever the carburetor would be, and it's going to stash a measured amount of fuel in the float bowl, and that's going to be what the engine is usually running off of. And you can run off this amount of fuel for a good couple minutes, typically, unless you're a high horsepower car that's very thirsty. And how does that fuel get into that float bowl? And that is past the first term that we are going to discuss, and that is the needle and seat. And the needle and seat, you can see here, I have where the fuel comes in, that was where the fuel hose was attached. And that needle and seat sits just down below it. And it's a very simple apparatus. Let's grab a pick here. I'm going to push my floats out of the way. And on here, there is a seat that the fuel flows through, which is usually a brass insert, and then there is a needle. And what happens is that seat is cut on a slight conical taper, and the needle is cut to the same taper. And so when the two tapers are set against each other, that stops the fuel flow from entering the carburetor. And there's a set pressure for this, and it's something that you run into on old cars occasionally, especially with electric fuel pump conversions, is that needle seat can only hold four to six PSI of fuel pressure before you run into overwhelming that needle and seat. And if you have more fuel pressure, you can have a whole host of problems that go with that. But typically, a standard mechanical fuel pump is only going to push four to six PSI anyway, so that's not gonna be a problem for you. That needle and seat though, you wanna make sure everything is clean. You can visually inspect that. Modern needles come with a Teflon tip or some type of rubberized tip. And those are pretty handy in making sure that any impurities, if there's small amounts of rust or dust or any dirt um, that gets in between the two seats, it still has the ability to seal up. It doesn't work all the time. It's not perfect, but it works really well. It's a nice improvement most of the time. Um, and so that is the first term that we're looking at is the needle and seat. The second is actually our floats. The float or floats, depending on if it's plural or not, uh, is what controls the needle and seat. And essentially all this is, is a level that as the carburetor float bowl fills up, these floats rise and will shut the needle and seat at the appropriate level. And then as the engine burns the fuel in the carburetor's float bowl, the floats will drop, the seat will allow more fuel in, it'll fill up and it will cycle that way 
to meet the engine's needs. Now these floats can give you a variety of problems over the years. Sometimes a little bit of moisture will get into the float bowls, especially on long-term storage or improper storage if you don't use a stabilizing agent. A little bit of moisture will build in here and you can end up with pinholes in your floats and then the floats will sink and it will allow the carburetor to overflow. Uh, these are very easy to test. You can just put them in a glass of water and let them sit for a while and if they sink, they are bad. If they do not, they are good. It's that easy. Uh, some people will try and repair them. You can see these are soldered together brass uh, or make them out of cork or any variety of things. They're a pretty simple piece of kit, but if you get into rare unobtainium carburetors, uh, the floats are something that you're gonna have to deal with. It can be a problem if you're flooding your carburetor, take a look at your floats or that needle and seat because you might have junk in the needle and seat that's pre preventing it from sealing or your float has sunk. Either or will lead to a flooding carburetor, which leads to our third term that you're going to come across and that is the jets. And this is one that is really popular. As a fancy term, it is a metered orifice. If you wanna think of it in layman's terms, it's an exact sized hole. Essentially, as the engine is revving, as that Venturi is pulling fuel, it has to pull the fuel through this jet. And how big that hole is determines the amount of fuel that you get into the engine. The most common thing that will happen on these is they will get plugged up with dirt and debris. In this case, this jet was pretty clogged up from rust and other corrosion that was happening in the fuel tank that I had to clean out. Now I need to clean the carburetor out and get this jet clean. They're pretty easy. You can soak them in a chemical-based cleaner. You can spray a chemical-based aerosol cleaner through there. But the one thing you do not want to do on these, because they are brass, they are very soft, you do not want to run like a steel wire or anything through these because if you put anything harder than brass through that hole, you're going to change the size of that jet. And yet again, it's a precision instrument. So if you change that size, the engine's going to run different. You're going to be changing the characteristics of the carburetor. So you want to be careful when cleaning these. You also want to be careful when removing them. Recommend getting the best screwdriver that you can that fits as positively as possible. Make sure to use some downward force as you crack them loose because these strip all the time and they are not fun to deal with when they do. So be sure, use the best tool that you can. I keep a set of screwdrivers around that I only work on carburetors with because I do not want them to get damaged or used in any other way. The next thing to talk about is the idle speed and idle mixture screws. And the catch here is people often use one to band-aid a misadjustment of the other. And that is to say, most of the time, people will use the mixture screw improperly and then use the idle speed screw to cover up for that. And I'll use this Rochester here to show you an example. And this is the idle mixture screw, the idle speed screw. You can see there that that is directly connected to the throttle blade. And so if I were to turn that in, it would open the throttle just ever so slightly in very finite increments. And this is going to adjust how much fuel is being pulled into the engine. And so if you misadjust this one, people try and band it by opening this one up just a little bit more, but you'll hit a point where it will open too much and will be trying to idle off of the main jet circuit, which means it would be significantly too rich. You're never going to get it to idle that way, or at least idle properly. You'll foul out plugs, you'll have terrible manners, they'll surge. The trick there is to make sure that you've got both set properly. You can reference a service manual for baseline settings on these and then dial them in accordingly based on those. On this little motorcycle carburetor, you can see this is our mixture screw. This is the idle speed screw. And that one adjusts right here that slide internally that hits a wedge on it and we'll move it up or move it down by rotating this in or out. Same with this one here. You can see there's a transfer port, air goes in and pulls fuel up through the idle jet. 
But again, you shouldn't be uh, having that slide really far open because that's going to run into weird problems in how it runs. And for this last item, I'm actually going to take apart this single barrel Rochester because it will have an accelerator pump in it. And that is something that this motorcycle carb does not have. And most motorcycle carbs, or at least small motorcycle carbs, do not have. And it's something that serves a very basic function. Essentially, an accelerator pump just squirts raw fuel in when a large throttle input is done. So if you very quickly give the accelerator a stab, normally the engine would stumble because it would get a large draw of air, but it wouldn't be able to pull in the appropriate amount of fuel to match it. So the accelerator pump is the solution to that problem. And all it is is a separate pump inside of the carburetor on a separate circuit that under a large input spring pressure forces a shot of raw fuel into the intake manifold. And so this is why sometimes if you're having trouble starting a car or something like that, you can pump the pedal a few times and it's squirting raw fuel in because of the accelerator pump. And you can see it's on an arm that actuates up and down vertically and it has a matching chamber in the base of the carburetor. And when that arm is moved quickly, it has a pump cup that seals against the outer edges of that chamber and forces the fuel down. However, if it, the throttle moves slowly, there's a spring here to compensate and that pump will just move and it will not provide that squirt of raw fuel. So it's a very simple mechanism yet again, on these Corvair carburetors like this single barrel Rochester HV, uh, these pump cups tend to go to crap over the years and especially ethanol fuels will eat away at the rubbers on them. By manually moving the throttle with the engine off, you can see that it won't spray any fuel in. You have to come in here and replace those pump cups. But on these small motorcycle carburetors with no accelerator pump, it's one less thing to fail. However, you have to deal with being much smoother with the throttle because the engine can't take large inputs as readily. So that's going to do it for my list of carburetor terms that you should know before diving into your project. If you think I forgot one, go ahead and leave it as a comment down below. It might help somebody else on their project. I'm going to get these carburetors reassembled, get the SL running again, and call it a night. But you should go out and work on your projects. I'll see you next week.